you have to be patient as the Lord works on you. Yes. Huh? Just because you got one function don't mean you need to go out and start your own church. Yeah. Oh, I got an unction. Let me go do this. That ain't nothing but excitement. Yeah. Because when the going gets tough, what do you do? Oh, tight is down. When the real work is there, oh, what do you do? Oh, I ain't showing up for work today. I don't feel good. Huh? It's a passion, baby. It's not, it's not about your excitement. It's not about, about what it is. That, uh, worship is a passion. Yes, it is. Huh? Praise is your excitement from your worship experience. You cannot have the praise experience unless you truly have the worship experience. Yes. I'm thinking about patience in the upper room. As when we are going through our upper room experience, have some patience and let the Lord work on you. It's, it's amazing. What's the word? What, it's, what manner of word is this word patience? What is that? I know you should never ask for it unless you are serious about it. Don't ever ask for patience unless you're serious about it. Because if you ask for it, I promise you, oh my God. Now it's hard for lay people and harder for their license, and even harder for the ordain. But it's serious business for a pastor to have patience. Well, why? Well, do not think for one moment pastors are not tired. Don't think for one moment we don't go through things. Don't think for one moment people don't do us wrong. Don't think for one moment you can pour out your last to people, but they still do you wrong. Don't think for one moment, my God, my God. Don't think, my I mean, you, you, the nerves you didn't even know you had get plugged. Get plugged. Don't think for one moment pastors are not hurt. Don't think they're not disturbed or annoyed, dismayed, and disappointed. Let me make this personal. Don't think for one moment that I don't go through some things. Don't think for one moment that people don't abuse me, don't use me. Don't think for one moment, but I'm doing this as unto the glory of God, and I'm not going to let what people do to me uh, uh, cause me to stop, cause me to quit, cause me, oh my God. People have wronged me, they've hurt me, they betrayed me, they disappointed me, they lied to me, they lied on me. My God, my God. They don't understand. They, they don't understand. They don't understand. They, they want what I got, but they won't put it in to get what I got. Huh? They want what's in my hand, but they want me to open my hand and give it to them. Huh? They want me to open my hand and give it to them. They won't even take the time to open a finger and do some work at the church, do some missionary work, do some evangelism work, do some outreach work, oh my God. They won't, they won't take the time to say, well, pastor, I'm going to take care of such and such. You ain't got to remind me every week to do such and such. You ain't got to remind me every week to come to a Bible study, to show up at church. You ain't got to remind me every sermon to tithe and offering unto the church for the work of the Lord. You ain't got to remind me. They don't want to do the work that it took to get to this point. It was not an easy time to get to this point. It was a hard task to get to this point. But anything worth having, you're going to have to put the work in to get it done. Yes. Yes. My God, my God. My God. But see, even then, when the pressure becomes more than we can bear, yeah. we have to go to the upper room. In the upper room, we can get our restoration and repair. Broken parts can be replaced. You can be tuned up with the word. In the, in the upper room, I get a refresh and my tears are wiped away. I get refocused in the upper room. So I go into the upper room with real issues but the blood. Oh, my God. I go into the room with real brokenness but the blood. I go into the upper room with real problems but the blood. I go into the upper room with all When I go into the upper room, hallelujah, hallelujah, God. When I go into the upper room, oh God, hallelujah, God. When I go into the upper room, Jesus began to speak to me. And he tell me I am his own, hallelujah. In the upper room, he tell me to come unto him, all that a heavy burden and labor, and he will give us rest. In the upper room, he cuts things off of us. He repairs things in the upper room. Oh my, 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 my. Everything 
that's broken, he pulls it off and he put, replaces it with a new part. In the upper room is a place of restoration, repair, and rejuvenation. In the upper room is a place that you go where he charges you back with the gospel. He reminds you that you are ye and tell you, okay, you're fixed. Now get out to the world and kick some spiritual butt. So I go into the upper room. We all got to have our upper room. Yes, sir. Oh, God. It's a place of patience, a place of unity, a place of communion, a place of consecration. The upper room is also a place of obedience. A place of obedience. Yeah. Though the son of perdition was there, Judas Iscariot, and Iscariot means assassin, he wasn't there long. He came, he stole, he betrayed. But to bring the wind of change through the body of Christ, we have to be obedient. Any part of no to the Lord is a no to all. Huh? You cannot have it your way. Look, my name is BK and I don't try to have it my way. But you cannot have it your way, have it your way because it's not your way. Huh? It's not you who gives salvation. It's not you who gives life. It is not you, my God, my God, that's able to do things out Obedience is self-sacrifice. The sacrifice of self does not replace the sacrifice of Christ, but it aligns you with the blessings and cancels the curses. One of the greatest challenges in the church today is the most simple of sins. And that simple sin steals God's glory. And that simple sin is a two-part compound word with two major syllables and it's disobedience. Three major syllables, disobedience. That simple sin is an indication of the condition of the hearts. Huh? Mankind is rebellious in all our ways. We are. Seeking self-glory at the expense of the glory of God. In the upper room, Jesus showed them the depth of his obedience. He knew what was going to come. Can I be real? Can I mess with you? I am at a, when I say I, I'm talking about us. I am at a red light. At a busy intersection, the corner of Lamar Airways. Huh? It's a red light before me. It's rush hour traffic passing across Lamar. Shoo, 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 shoo. Going both ways. Shoo, 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 shoo. I'm at the red light. Now, that red light is not stopping me from crossing. It ain't. <coughs> it's natural fear and common sense. Huh? It's by natural fear and common sense I keep my foot on that brake. Huh? Because I know that if I go out into that traffic, what's going to happen? I'll be torn from Sunday to yonder. Huh? I'll be torn from Sunday to yonder. It's the obedience of knowing what it is that can happen if I step outside of the will of God that keeps me in the will of God. It's the obedience. It's the obedience. I know that I can go out and do a whole bunch of crazy things. I, I know I can go out and probably do all kinds of just minor things and get away when you may not even know about it. But I know that if I do what it is that I do, it may not show up in the place that I did it, but it will show up in some other place in my life. Some other hurt, some other anger, some other pain. It will show up in that way. Yes. Obedience. Simple obedience, simple obedience. One more thing. Might be the last thing, let's blow a second. A place, the upper room is a place of miracles. It's a place of miracles. I'm so tired of the church not seeing miracles. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Why would we see miracles? Because our feet is so You know, let, let's be real. Let's be real. Here in the U.S., 
the place that launched missionaries all around the world. The place where many great revivals sparked up and impacted and affected places like England, Germany, Asia, China, Japan, Korea. Huh? People in China can't even have Bibles, but they happen to get a word. They happen to get the Oh my God! They happen to get the word of God. The words we can go down to the Dollar Tree all day long and buy a Bible. All day long, twice on some days, and buy a Bible. But to you, that's the place where all this stuff launched out. Where there's a church on every corner, and people people want to blame a church on every corner is the reason we don't have big bodies. But the devil is alive. We've been told a testimony of how churches do, began to form from a revival, they, from a from a, uh, a conference they had in Africa, in Nigeria, about a conference they had. And I mean, you're talking about 10 or 11 churches came out of this one thing. The guy who spoke to us on Friday night had over 100 churches that are part of the March of Faith Fellowship, huh? Huh? And each and every one of those churches are outgrowing their buildings. On the first day, he opened a church and a place. He opened up a big warehouse. Oh, my God. A big warehouse. He converted it to a church. And on the first day, the church had over 40,000 people on the inside and had 10,000 more on the outside trying to get to the inside. That's the way the church should be. But the only way the church is going to be that way is we have to take our great commission serious. Huh? We have to take our great commission Amen. serious. In those places where they where where they they're, they're ministering over in Africa, where where it's voodoo and witch doctors and all that other stuff was so prevalent at that point in time. In that place where we know that Christianity didn't reach Africa before it reached Europe, but in that place where Islam had took a foot and took a hold, we have thousands of shaykh We have thousands of Muslims day by day turning it over, giving their lives under Christ, repenting, renouncing, and rededicating themselves. But in the United States, in the United States, my God, help us, Lord. In the United States, we 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 just ain't where we need to be, huh? We become relaxed, huh? We become like Israel was of days ago. We take God for granted. We, 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 we take his grace for granted. We, we operate in disobedience and we've got the nerve to bend our lips and say, Lord, know my heart. But he sees your actions, so yeah, he does know your heart. Because if you had the heart, you would take the action that you were taking in the first place. You would not grieve the Holy Spirit by living your life in such a flamboyant, mascarious way, in such a way that causes pain to come upon you. It was a place of miracles. The upper room was a place of miracles. In the upper room on the day of Pentecost, the mighty rushing wind did blow. As fire stood on their heads in tongues, their tongues were set ablaze with the pneuma of God poured into their faith. In this place of miracles, Holy Spirit manifested himself in such a way. He manifests himself in such a way. Now that the disobedience, now that obedience had kept, now obedience had kept the disciples in the upper room waiting in that place, surrounded by the presence of prayer, surrounded by the presence of praise, surrounded by the presence of purity in which Holy Spirit brought. They had been prepared to go from the upper room to the lower room, in the lower room of that place. They were close by the temples. The disciples now turned apostles, came down from the place of the quicken, and all had flames on their heads to pour out what had been poured into them. You know, as you pour out, you're going to have opposition, though. Amen. You're going to have opposition. People going to fight you. Right. People going to be so arrogant and self in their own selfish ways. Uh, more concerned about what it is that they're doing, not even concerned about who empowered them in the first place. Who gave it to them in the first place? Who gave understanding to them? Who loved them in the first place? More concerned, uh, and they're going to be your opposition. Yes. But the presence of the Lord in that place quieted every tongue. And when every ear 
that had the Pharisee earwax built up was clear. They heard the word of the Lord. Then afterwards, 120 were joined by 3,000. 3,000 more the next day. It doubled, and then trouble came to that place. I'm closing, y'all. Stand on your feet. Trouble came to that place. How many know that trouble is going to come when you do what's right? Uh, trouble is going to hang around and try to watch you to make sure you don't do what's right. Trouble came to that place in the upper room. Trouble that wasn't meant to destroy them, but trouble meant to spread the word. God will trouble the water in order to get you to go out and do what he called you to do. God will cause conflict at your work in order to get you to minister to somebody who's going to do something at your job. God will cause conflict on the assembly line to get you to minister to the person who's next to you on the assembly line. He'll cause conflict in the HR office to get you to minister the gospel to the HR manager. He'll cause conflict in places that you never know. That he'll cause conflict in order to light your fire, in order to recommission you, in order to reconsecrate you, in order to redirect you, in order to wake up your purpose inside of you. So from the upper room to the lower room, to the steps, to the streets. The word of God cannot be held up in the word, in the church building no more. Child was just killed this week, I'm told. Another child, another child. I've been around a day or two, just a few. Just a few. But I've never seen so much murder and mayhem in West Memphis, Arkansas, as I'm seeing now. They say over 4,000 shootings in Chicago, Illinois. Seven, 800 or more people don't got killed. This is a summer of murder and mayhem. And we, and we, we failed to reconnect it back to the sin. Huh? We want God to bless our mess. We want God to, 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 to bless us when we're doing stupid stuff. And we don't realize that how all this stuff has come upon us is because of the sin that we've allowed to come in this country. Because of the sin, the sin of same-sex marriage, the sin of gender biased bathrooms, the sin of accepting. When you accept what God has cursed, then you're going to receive the curses that may not even seem to be related. Let's think real, let's think medically. If doctors understood what caused every ailment, it'll put them out of business. If they explain to you what caused their ailment, it'll put them out of business. Huh? Up until after World War, no, pardon me, up until after the Civil War, they never, and I know there's some nurses that'll back me up, they didn't understand how to sterilize things. And they wonder why things, what, what happened, why, why people would end up getting sick and dying. And these were medical professionals. They didn't understand the power of sterilization. They didn't realize that the little small germs, they could not see were causing these major big things, problems that they had. In the church, the same thing. We fornicated. Our bank account go down to zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're cursing. My God, my God, my God. We're cursing and profaning the name of God. And all of a sudden we get sick, deadly sick. Mm -hmm. You like, it don't make sense to you. It don't make sense. I just cut my finger high in the world that I get a double hernia over here. It's because the way the blessings and the curses are. It says you'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come, blessed when you go. It didn't say how and where you will be blessed, but it also said you'll be cursed in the city, cursed in the field, cursed when you come, cursed when you go. You need to understand this stuff. My God. Let, let me move on. I'm finna finish. In the church today, 
the upper room experience is symbolically holy fire.